This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 33, on the 30th of October 2013. An interview with Anna Quistapachi from Zoo Labs and with Eric Robertson from the band The Boston Boys. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show. And this week it's a real pleasure to have uh, Anna Quistapachi on the show, a co-founder of uh, Zoo Labs. So hi Anna and great to have you on. How's it going? Good, thanks. Yeah, so it's great to see you and uh, I would uh, love to talk about uh, Zoo Labs. So I, I, I got quite interested in the in the project as soon as I, I saw what you guys were doing. And so uh, really keen on having you on the show and talk about uh, the project. So first of all, uh, when did Z- Zoo Labs start and what is it? Um, yeah, so Zoo Labs actually is the most recent iteration of the, the program in the space um, in West Oakland where we are. Um, in California, we, the actual space, the zoo, a recording studio and office space uh, was uh, founded about five years ago. Right. Um, and so uh, it, it started as a place for music producers and record labels and music lawyers to all sort of be under one house. And, and the idea was really to incubate projects. Um, the, the newest iteration of that really launched this summer um, as Zoo Labs. So we're a, we're a program with a social mission to help creative people um, fulfill their entrepreneurial dreams, whether it's a startup company in tech, whether it's um, an artist or a musical project. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so a little bit more about what we actually do now. As sure, of apps. course. Yeah, yeah. And, and so yeah. Uh, looking at uh, the space as well, so how are you the sole users uh, of the space right now or do you share it with other people too? Yeah, we share it with um, we share it with the uh, with the zoo, which is the actual commercial recording studio side of the building. Great. Um, yeah, so That's we share awesome. it with them. Zoo Labs is is the nonprofit arm of of this space. Perfect. And so you have two, uh, you know, different strands. Uh, of course, you have. Uh, 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 you know, music, a startup lab. You have a beat lab, which is more music focused. You have a music residency. So let's start with the startup lab. Uh, you know, who is it catering to, and what kind of startups do you, do you aim to have in the space? Yeah, we um, we're specifically looking at early stage startups who um, who have uh, a very strong focus of what they want to do already. So we actually do. We're we're quite a small space. So. In terms of looking at the co-working spaces that are out there, you know, the, the huge ones that have, you know, the capacity to hold lots of teams, we are like definitely a little more curated and we focus on people who have um, drive and passion and are really trying to uh, offer something that, that will have an, an innovative and a new social um, impact on, on communities. But that being said, we, um, it's, it's pretty broad. So... So far, we've had um, a company doing a mobile uh, phone charging station powered by solar power for East Africa. Uh, that's right. a company called Juobar. We've also had more of um, maybe your s- social, what you might think of coming out of San Francisco, a really beautiful social uh, platform allowing people to make itineraries for their friends in right. their cities. So that's called Mosey. It allows you to make mosies for your friends. Um, and then we've also had another, um, another company called Musicara, and they're much more focused in the music tech area, which is something that we've gotten a lot of interest from. Right. Um, and because we have a music recording studio, obviously, you know, we've attracted people in the music and tech, um, and, and tech world. Yeah. 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 That's we have, we have, uh, our, our, the origins of the, this, so uh, started with um, some people from Google. So we have a strong engineering uh, component to um, to our community, which I think attracts that kind of crossover. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, you have a startup lab that we talked about. And uh, uh, from that, yeah, there's also a beat lab, which is more music oriented. So uh, what is the beat, el- a beat lab or element all about? Yeah, so the B-Lab is actually a really exciting program that we're just getting off the ground. But the idea is a co-working space for music producers, which is not something that you see very often. And in fact, I don't know if you've, if you've heard of one. I'd, I'd love to have you tell me, but we, um, we developed these mobile 
uh, music making stations. Right. So we hacked together a, um, a rolling projector cart. Um, and put a keyboard, like a piano keyboard, um, a dock for your computer and some speakers. Um, and so that can be really like a, a very high powered music production uh, station, right. allowing music producers to come in here, get a couple of hours a month, um, you know, whatever sort of uh, level that they want and make music in our studio. So it, it gives our use to making music at home or maybe in like a very small studio, you know, as, as much as they can afford. It gives them access to a bigger studio, a wider community of people, a really nice place, but at a, an affordable rate. Yeah, that's great. So I think, you know, it's, yeah. That's great because, I mean, I, we're, I, we're really interested in how that grows. Yeah, I'm aware of some spaces in London, for example, that uh, there's a couple of buildings that have a bunch of uh, small studios i think that are more sort of production catered but they are quite expensive and they are sort of for the sole rental of one producer per space so i guess right. it's like sort of one step up in this in the sense that it you know what you're looking at like sort of eight nine hundred bucks and a thousand bucks a month instead of uh, what you charge it is a uh, considerably less right yeah we have we have uh we have rates that start at two hundred dollars a month so it's it's extremely affordable i mean that's for you know only um uh, only a handful of hours a month, but then you can go up. So I think that that's like two, or I might be misspeaking, four six-hour sessions a month, I think. Yeah. So you can program those in, and for an amateur music producer that's really trying to work consistently and get to the next level, you know, it's actually set up kind of like a gym membership. Yeah. So <laughs> it's healthy to make music and be creative yeah. <laughs> that's what we think <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is that you know are you tapping into the local community are you attracting people from outside that are interested in the program what's your what's your uh, uh ideal resident from, from in that sense yeah yeah um well interestingly i mean i guess uh talking about the beat lab and the um startup lab as well um are one of the I saw that you interviewed Brian Sisk from the SF Music Tech Summit. Uh, that's been a really um, enormous resource for us in terms of uh, tapping into a community of people that's uh, really interested in in both music and technology. Um, and that's I think in terms of startup companies, that's definitely a community that we're looking towards supporting because we're we are in Silicon Valley after all. We're in the Bay Area. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, tech uh, talent around here yeah. and obviously we've got a music industry in general that needs uh, that needs help figuring itself out uh, there's a lot of space to come up with new um, and relevant things for for musicians so that's really for the startup side that's been um, besides just word of mouth that's been a really um, great community for us on the music producing side, uh, since we have been around for five years as a music studio, we've got, um, you know, the word has traveled about who we are and what we are. And so that's where we're really looking for music producers from connections with the artists that have recorded in our studio commercially um, and friends, uh, our, our extended network. Yeah, that's great. And so, so, so looking at... Uh, 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 Auckland as well as a, as a, as a place. You know, I, I know that San Francisco is becoming crazy uh, as far as property prices and rents. Are you seeing? Uh, how, uh, you know, I don't know anything about Auckland. Is it like a more affordable uh, option for people that are living in San Francisco? And, and if so, do you see more people moving into the area that perhaps can't quite uh, priced out of a San Francisco proper. Absolutely, yeah. There's absolutely a shift towards Oakland. I think it's it's um it's a community that over the last. 15 years has seen really seen a re renaissance there was um a period of time when oakland was uh pretty abandoned in terms of you know um businesses and activity and there's been a lot of revitalization going on which is ex it's really exciting the art scene is booming um the the tech scene is growing um, it's much more affordable to get office space over here. We've got a, a hub that just opened, you know, um, a business co-working space that opened in Oakland that's been very active in the community. Um, there's Pandora and Grace Note that are big music tech companies that are actually found based in Oakland. Um, and we're seeing a lot of people just coming over here looking for more affordable living in general. And it's also, you know, it's a different, it's, 
some people compare it um, as the, it's like the Brooklyn of uh, San Francisco Bay Area. So, you know, Oakland is like the Brooklyn to San Francisco and New York. Yeah. But uh, um, I think it's really true. It's a little bit on a smaller level and it's, it's so it's, it's very attractive for that reason. And it's definitely more affordable. Yeah, and Absolutely. so and so looking at uh, let's introduce the residency program you have or the music residency program because uh, and then we're going to bring in uh, the the first band that was involved in this. So uh, what was the? Can you give us a, an introduction before we bring the band in and ask them about their experience? Yeah, absolutely. So this is an extremely exciting program for us because um, as a space, we really we strive to experiment with new models of supporting creative entrepreneurs is really what we've been calling them. And um, the basis of our, of Zoo Labs was from this insight that um, as much as entrepreneurs and startups are creative, creatives like musicians are, are entrepreneurial. And really to be a successful musician, you need to be um, very entrepreneurial. So the light went off. Um, <laughs> so we built this music residency program. Um, it's a, it's a two week, uh, live on site uh, program for bands who, um, are interested in being better entrepreneurs. So we accept only, uh, teams of people. Right. We don't accept single artists. And that was something that was really important for us because, uh, we know um, from, from our own experience working on projects that you really need support of people around you. So we think that musicians should come in with those people to our residency program. The idea is really to propel them from um, where they are forward with tools um, in, in business thinking, in brand thinking, in team collaboration right. uh, management. Uh, and so it's, it's been, it's been a really exciting program to develop and, um, even more to have happen for the first time. Absolutely. So basically what, um, just to, just to be clear, the two weeks is, um, uh, the, the people live, the residents live at our space, Zoo Labs, in an apartment above the studio. In the morning, they've got a workshop. Um, and in the afternoon for about 12 hours, they've got access to the recording studio and an engineer to record. So, yeah, so it was, um, so it helps it on the business side, but it also helps them get a, a few tracks recorded yeah. too, which is great. Yeah. There is this great thing that, uh, Eric Robertson, who we'll, we'll talk to in just a moment from the Boston boys, um, said, he, he said, it's incredible to be leaving these two weeks with a fully recorded EP a strategic plan and no debt. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think this is like a, this is huge for musicians and yeah. it's a different kind of model that we're trying to propose, which is, um, you know, which is that bands more and more have access to tools that allow them to manage their own careers. And yeah. we all know that the music industry is, is in major flux. And a lot of recording uh, record labels are not, you know, able to give the artist development support that they were in the past. Um, people are looking for new models, but so these artists have all these new tools, but they often don't have the time to think strategically about their growth. Yeah. You know, they're they're much more apt, and uh, for obvious reasons, you know, to to stay in the studio to make their music as best, you know, and fulfill that creative drive that they have. Um, but it's not often that time is set aside for them to think about their, you know, career business plan and so business speak. plan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Business plan. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so it was a extremely successful first residency and, um, that's great. We plan, plan to do it a couple of times a year. Uh, so it's great uh, to continue the interview with uh, Anna Aquistapaci uh, from uh, Zoo Labs. And we brought in uh, Eric Robertson, uh, who uh, is a member of the Boston Boys, uh, which is the first band that was part of the residency program at Zoo Labs. So hi, Eric, and thanks for joining us. No problem. Glad to be here. And so, uh, you know, first of all, let's talk about your experience. You're the first band to do this. It's a very interesting program in the way it's structured, these two weeks of intensive work and living in the space as well. So how did you hear about it and how did you end up uh, uh, applying and, and getting, getting there? 
Right. So it's pretty interesting for us. Uh, we didn't find out about the program until I, I maybe mean, two days before the application was due. Right. And, and I, I don't know how long you guys had the applications up for, but for us it was a very okay. Yeah. So for us it was a really quick turnaround process. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as we heard about it and uh, were advised to apply uh, by Dan Lawrence, who's somebody that works for the zoo. Um, we jumped right on it and applied. So we, our connection is through Josh Hari, our bass player, uh, who grew up in Oakland, California, and had worked at the zoo, uh, just recording as a freelance musician on various sessions. But right. I guess Dan had been keeping up with what we had been doing as the band and particularly was maybe interested in the fact that um, we're not only a, a rock band that tours and plays at festivals, but we were doing all this teaching stuff and had a sort of an educational approach with our business Right. And uh, that sort of allowed for us to have this partnership with the State Department um, and, and do some traveling. So That's great. Yeah, That's fantastic. That was, how, that was how we found out about it. That's how they found out about us. And, yeah, just in two days, we turned the application around and all crossed our fingers. And, and, and it all worked know, out. The whole way we've organized, the way we approach our business, and the way that we're moving forward has completely changed since yeah. we've been at the zoo. So it's not necessarily like all of a sudden we have a million more Facebook oh, likes. Oh, no, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, have, having said that, we were actually already set up for 10 weeks of touring after the zoo, which we're about right. to leave for. So, if anything, the zoo just gave us this crazy momentum to, to actually hit the road with. Absolutely. Um, but it, but it, it was really just a change in the way that we organize our business, the way that we approach ourselves. I think that um, what I mentioned before about us sort of juggling uh, our, our identity and trying to figure out what our identity is. Yeah. Um, it, that was a struggle for us. And when we got to the zoo, it was an obvious struggle. I think on our first couple of classes, they sort of just broke that open immediately. And who are you guys? Which for musicians and artists is like the question you never want to get asked. You know, like, <laughs> What's your art about? Who are you? And everybody has this instinct to be like, oh, I don't know. It comes from the stars. And just, we just go with the flow, man. You know, But really, the, we, have a, we have a clear objective and, and we have a, a clear identity. And we really learned to embrace it while we were there. Yeah, sure. And so looking at, uh, talking about the, the masterclass side, on, uh, Anna was talking about the fact that that was sort of the, the morning side and then in the, in the yeah. afternoon, evening you were recording. Right. And so uh, how, how did you, uh, how, how much that, you know, you learned there is something that you can apply to what you're doing? We were all very stimulated, uh, exceptionally stimulated by all of the morning classes. Yeah. Um, you know, business is something that we're interested in. We wouldn't have apply for this program if we weren't at all. Of course. But it is also something that, especially me personally, um, I've not always had the chops for. At least I didn't think I did. Yeah. Um, and, and this is coming from someone, you know, we all went to music school. We all had our education in music. And a lot of this business stuff isn't really touched on yeah. um, unless you really seek it out. I took one music business class Right. At, at the Berkeley College of Music and yeah. uh, you know that was mo mostly focused on record deals and that's a you know that's something that we barely even touched on with the zoo because it, it's irrelevant yeah. to, wh to what we're doing and it's irrelevant to what most y young musicians are doing is signing these big record contracts that you get tied down to for five years and then you get a certain amount of points and I, I, because that was where my music business class started that I took it um, at Berkeley and I'm not trying to you know it's an amazing school. That's where we all met. Yeah, that's right. Been playing music stuff, but because that's where that class started, I was sort of disinterested from the get go. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, and yeah. looking at uh, sort of the the way you structured it, uh, Anna, as well. So, what what was your focus when you were putting this together, thinking about the bands that was going to be involved in in the masterclass? What what did you think were the things that were going to really stimulate them? Yeah, well, I think what's what's actually really interesting is that we we talked about it a lot and we made a design choice um, from the beginning to not uh, go to people who were specifically from the music industry. Mm. Uh, and so what we were really interested in doing was um, empowering them with tools rather than telling them, you know, one of the things we said in the beginning is we're not going to give you answers. Yeah. We just want to give you tools. So mm -hmm. we, we approached people who um, are in the realm of, of design thinking and of innovation and of brand, which is, you know, regardless of whether it's music or um, a, a big uh, product company, brand is a, is, a, is a tool, you know. And so, so what does it mean um, in its essence to approach those, those things? We had one music-focused class, which was music law, which I think was... Yeah. essential because you know right. you you yeah. have that but yeah so 
So we didn't approach it from a music focused perspective. We approached it from a perspective of, of the entrepreneur and of, yeah. of business. Yeah. Which I felt complete. And I think the band felt completely empowered by from the yeah. get go. Cause we sat down and all of a sudden the conversation wasn't about, it was, it was open ended. They let us think big, you know, they, the questions began with, you know, not necessarily what was the next most realistic and practical move, but, you know, think big, think outside. What are you guys trying to do if you had all the resources in the world? And when you ask somebody that, it's, it's almost scary. It catches you off guard because we're not used to having that much power. But uh, it was amazing. And I would say the music law class, that was so, it was so great that that was the only one that was directly maybe related to music business because what Elliot Kahn, the music lawyer who we worked with, um, who taught us, uh, it shows us is the actual laws that are in place. You know, this is the actual law that you have to work around, but this is it. You know, you have yeah. to do things within the construct of the law or else you'll be breaking the law, but but that's it. Anything else we're open to think as big as we could. Yeah, that's um, great. And actually, I always love telling the anecdote that the first class we did had nothing to do with us or or the music business. Actually, the first thing they had us do was sit down and try to design a way to entertain commuters on the train. <laughs> right. and, and they gave right. us 15 minutes and some pipe cleaners and some cotton balls and tinfoil. <laughs> and we had to physically, no, I'm serious. That's I mean, great. we were just, we had to physically design in small groups uh, a way to entertain. And when someone gives you 15 minutes and a goal and you have to come up with something, you do. Yeah. And we were all blown away at our own capability to be sitting here, what, designing iPhone apps and designing technology for cars because we were given the permission to think as big as we could. Yeah. And every every day, every class at the zoo, you're 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 granted that right to think as big as you can. And so when you roll into the music studio at two o'clock in the afternoon, that's where the band sits. And yeah. we've all been thinking together and maybe it wasn't about the specific song we're about to record, but just the act of sitting there and thinking together and thinking big and creatively had a huge effect on our music when we went into the studio every day, um, besides giving us, now being out of the studio, an amazing uh, you know, sort of organ organization, organizational grasp yeah. on what our business plan is here moving forward. And so, uh, yeah, one thing that's interesting, actually, Anna was talking about the fact that they wanted uh, bands to come into the program rather than solo artists. And uh, I guess a lot of the bands that I talked to, uh, they still have this notion where there is the one person or the one or two people max in the band that really take care of all the business side of things if there isn't a manager yeah. involved. And yeah. the other people kind of wash their hands off the rest of, of what's happening on the business front. So did you right. find that this experience sort of helped the band come together on that front as well so that everybody is getting involved sort of in a more equal way as to how you get involved in the business, the ideas that come out and, and uh, how excited everybody is about moving everything forward? Absolutely. Uh, everybody's more engaged. And for us, the really interesting thing is that with the Boston Boys, there's five of us. There's four of us in the band that you see in all the pictures. And then our fifth member is our manager. Right. And, uh, and he was out at the zoo with us, Ben Barron. And he's a member of the band. He's a member of the team. And we all share everything equally. And we all own this business equally, which in itself is a progressive move. Because traditionally, you'd have the band and the business. And you would pay your manager and your agent and everybody as outside resources. But the fact we have someone within the team whose literal job is to do the business stuff all day when, when we're, you know, doing music stuff, it, it was great. But, you know, he can't do his job alone and he, he, he does, it never works that way, even in an ideal world. You know, we're always yeah. going to have to be engaged in the business. So to have the five of us engaged for half the day on what we can be doing, uh, from a, from a business and a branding standpoint, uh, was was really powerful and yeah. and you know just realizing what everybody's strengths are and what the fastest way for this thing to move forward is you know yeah. and finally yeah. let's talk about the music of course you know can't can't leave that and so you had the opportunity to also use the studio uh, yeah. a, a whole a whole load uh, during that those two weeks and so did you, sure. did you did you walk in with something you had you know you had a, a bunch of tracks ready to record or tracks that you wanted to re-record that you weren't happy with before well, what was your aim with the two week sessions so we recorded all new songs right. and actually when we when we found out about the zoo uh we had maybe five or six songs or seven songs ready to record um, but a lot of the application, and I don't know if there was, this was their intention or not, what, what I read and what we read from the application 
what we felt from it was that they really wanted a project right. uh, that was cohesive. And maybe to us, cohesive, you know, maybe if we would have just recorded five random songs, that would have been cohesive to outside ears. But for us, we, we really wanted, uh, and what we felt like was missing from our last two EPs was, was something that was really cohesive and flowed from track to track. So we actually took three of the songs that we really wanted to record, and we, we decided to write songs in between. We ended up with seven songs, but it's sort of this concept uh, flow of an album that Anyway, we finished it somehow in the in the, uh, in the time that we were there, and That's great. We're really we're really excited about it. I mean, we didn't treat this any different from we, than we would any other recording session, and I think we all agree that it's our you know it's our best record yet. That's great. So yeah. that's great. Well, thanks so much, and I, I really believe you know it's it's a great project, uh, Anna, and uh, I I really hope you know you can move it forward and have more bands on. And yeah, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show as well was because. I hope it inspires people that listen to the show in other countries as well to uh, perhaps set up uh, similar projects, uh, whether they have their own okay. studios or whether they can find a way to make it work. But you know, I think I really believe it's it's a great way to help uh, artists. Absolutely, it's a wonderful project, and we have you know an amazing relationship with Anna and everyone at the zoo now, and um, it's 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 the model, you know, it's the future. You can resist yeah. it. People can resist it now, but it, it makes far more sense than anything else I've ever seen in the music industry. So uh, I think it, it'll catch on, you know. That's yeah, great. We, we're really yeah. hoping to bring a new perspective to it all. So thank you for interviewing us. And, well, that's, and that's yeah. great. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, it's uh, for the Zoo Labs project. It's, uh, the address is uh, zoolabs.org. So uh, go and check that out. And uh, for the Boston Boys, you're going to find their website on thebostonboys.com. And you can also find them on uh, Facebook, on facebook.com slash thebostonboys. And uh, thanks so much for uh, joining me today. And thanks so much for listening to the show. Uh, you can find the show. It, the show comes out every week. It's the one-to-one. -one, but uh, there's also a weekly news show that I release. Uh, you can find that on digitalmusictrends.com. Thank Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week and until next time. Thanks for listening to the DMT one to one show and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.